Some of you may not realize that because of the size of our congregation, we actually have a TV overflow room downstairs, and we appreciate those who are willing to uh, rotate meeting down there. And if you've been coming to Ohana and haven't taken your turn, we would ask you, encourage you to do that. But as we um, look here in the, uh, as we're preparing for the message, I like to involve the downstairs in the illustrations. So often what I do upstairs, I have Brother John copy downstairs. But today I'm baking some cookies, and I have it on good, reliable sources that I should not have Brother John baking cookies. And so uh, instead what we're going to do, since they don't get to participate fully in the illustration, we're going to give everybody downstairs a cookie right now. So they're going to go ahead and pass those out. The rest of you backsliders upstairs don't get the cookie. Uh, just a few of you will. But everybody downstairs is going to get a cookie since they can participate in the illustration. Turn to Psalms chapter 34. Psalms chapter 34. October 6th is our anniversary Sunday, Ekomamaya, welcome to our church, and, and we're just reaching out to our community because it's not about us, it's about God first, it's about others second, and we want to reach our community, invite them to be our special guests, and so we've had a, all the month of September, the first week we asked you to pass out tracts and invitations, and then the, the second week we asked you to specifically do a, a prayer ministry, and by the way, just to make sure you understand the prayer ministry is not just that you're going to pray for them to come to church, but prayer ministry is not about inviting people to church. It's about ministering to them through prayer. It's when you go to somebody and say, I'm going to pray for you over the next seven days. And uh, if you have any special requests, let me know that. But otherwise, I'm going to pray for you for the next seven days. It's just a ministry to people and letting them know that you care about them and uh, praying for them as well. And then we're going to, this week, we are going to be doing our cookie week. And this is where we're asking you to make some cookies and then to take them and a, pl a plate of cookies and one of these invitations right here and invite them to church as your special guest. Everybody likes cookies and it's a great way to invite people to come out. And so since we're, we're going to be uh, using cookies this week, I thought I would use it in the sermon as well. In Psalms chapter 34... At verse number one, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses is the man that trusteth in him. And, you know, I, that's what I want to talk about today is to taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, if you're going to make cookies, it, it starts with the recipe. Uh, you've got to start with having a, a good recipe. Uh, I've got a recipe that uh, is passed down to my wife from, uh, she's got one from her mom and one from my mom. In fact, it was published in this uh, cookbook we did years ago here at Ohana, uh, A Taste of Aloha, and it's on page 149 there in the book, and, and um, 137, I mean, and so, but it's a, it's a recipe for cookies, and it always starts with the recipe, and it basically it starts with the cookbook. And, and a cookbook is kind of like a, a Bible. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, a cookbook is not a, a book that's meant to be read like a novel. Now, I know there are times that you might grab a cookbook off the shelf and go sit down in your easy chair in the living room and kind of flip through there, looking at all the different recipes and thinking about kind of imagining what I could make and, and how that would taste and all the rest of it. But reading a cookbook has never satisfied me. Reading a cookbook has never uh, satisfied my hunger. You, you see, a cookbook is a book that you read, but then you put together. You take the recipes you read about and you put them together to make something delicious. And the Bible is the same way. The Bible is God's cookbook. The Bible is full of recipes for life. And it's not intended just to be sat down and read it. I think you should read your Bible every day. But then God wants you to take what you read and take all the ingredients and put it together in your life to make something wonderful. And so we need to taste and see that the Lord is good, to realize that what he gives us in his word, he gives us there so that we can put it together like a recipe in our lives that we might enjoy it. 
You see, reading is not enough. If, if I go to page uh, 137, let me turn over there real quick. Uh, that's where the recipe is for my wife's cookies, page 137. And I'm going to read this to you. Uh, it says, one cup Crisco shortening, uh, half a cup of white sugar, one cup of brown sugar, two eggs, one teaspoon of vanilla, two cups flour, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking soda, three quarters chocolate chips, cream shortening sugar, stir in eggs and vanilla, mix in dry ingredients, adding chocolate chips when it's all mixed well. Are you enjoying this yet? Does this really taste good? You see, reading a recipe will never satisfy you. It's just not enough. It's where you start, but it's not enough. In Philippians 3.10, it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death. See, Paul said, I want to know. I don't want to just read about him. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. See, the question is, do you have the cookie. Now, I made some cookies right beforehand here, and uh, they're kind of a small pan, but let me grab one out of here real quick and, and, and ask you a question now. Here, I've got one of these cookies right here, and I, I wonder right now, uh, let's see, um, who do I want to give it to? Uh, I got all these people waving at me over here. All right, Alex, I'm going to get, now, Alex, do you have the cookie? No. You don't, do you? I have the cookie. You don't have it. 1 John chapter 5, verse 12 says this, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Either you have it or you don't. Do you have the cookie? I have the cookie. You don't have the cookie, right? See, either you have it or you don't. Either you have life or you don't have life. Either you have Jesus Christ or you don't have Jesus Christ. That's what salvation is. And salvation is where you have to receive the cookie. In Romans chapter 10 and verses 9 to 10, it says that, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God is raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In Romans 10, 13, it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, when Paul said, I want to know him, there's three different ways you can know this cookie. For example, uh, Alex, do you see this cookie? Do you know that it's a cookie? Yes. You can see and know it's a cookie, right? Yes. All right. Does that satisfy you? No. no, it does not. See, he knows it here. You can know that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. You can know that he died for you to save you from sins. You can know that he's the only way of salvation. But you need more than that. Now, Alex, I'm going to take the next step. I'm going to help you to know this cookie. So put your hand out like this. All right. Now, just hold it in your hand. Now, Alex, do you know that cookie? <laughs> he said, no. <laughs> yeah, you know it because you're holding it now, right? But you, don't still, you still don't know it, do you? You want to know it better? Yeah. All right. So if you really want to know that cookie better, go ahead and eat the cookie. Now he knows it. You see, you can... That's good. Um, <laughs> you can know who Jesus is. You can know that God loves you. You can know that he died for you. You can know that salvation is through Christ alone. <clears throat> but knowing it here, you've got to know it here. But that, by knowing it here is you receive him. You've got to know him by receiving him as your Savior. He didn't know that cookie until he ate that cookie. And you don't know Jesus Christ until you receive Christ as your Savior. You see, you can go out today after the service because I made you hungry, and you can go home and you can make your own cookie. You, you can do that. You can go home and make your own cookie. If you want this recipe, well, we'll get it for you. But here's the thing. You can't make your own salvation. In Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and then not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, you cannot go out and make your own salvation through your good works, through your religion or your rituals or your own righteousness. It is a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want a relationship with that cookie where it becomes a part of me. And I want a relationship with Jesus Christ where he becomes a part of me. You see, you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. In 1 John chapter 5, and verse number 13, it says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. That's verse 12. These things have I written unto you, verse 13, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God, and that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. 
you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. You can know that you have eternal life if you have Jesus Christ as your Savior. Go over to 2 Timothy chapter 1, if you would. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And look at verses 5 and 6. As I mentioned earlier, this recipe has been passed down from generation to generation, I think for at least three generations. In 2 Timothy chapter, five, chapter 1 and verses 5 and 6, the Bible says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which first dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I persuade thee also, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands." You see, Paul was talking about, he said, listen, this is, a, this is from generation to generation. Your grandmother was saved. Your mother was saved. And Timothy, you have Christ, your Savior. Now, Timothy wasn't saved because his parents were saved, but because he had done what they did. He had trusted Jesus Christ. They had passed down their, their faith. They had passed down their belief in Jesus Christ to the next generation. The Bible talks about that... Uh, that we're to train up a child the way she go. When he's old, he'll not depart from it. And the word train there, it, it comes from a root word in the Hebrew language, which means to make it tasty, to make it tasty. Go over to 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and look at verses uh, 14 through 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning with verse number 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, and knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which will make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see, from a child, his parents had taught him that believing in God and reading your Bible and praying and going to church, that that was good for you. It, it was something that was tasty. I remember as a child watching my mom making cookies, and I remember how she would hand me the spoon, and I'd get to lick the spoon. You know what I'm talking about? And, and I'd remember how that she'd, she'd give me a few of the chocolate chips and let me nibble on those and, and have that. And I especially remember eating the cookie dough before it went in the oven, getting a spoonful of cookie dough. But there was nothing better than those warm cookies fresh out of the oven and, 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 and just enjoying that. You know, that was tasty. That's a memory that, that made me want to enjoy those the rest of my life. And, and you know what? When you make going to church something that's tasty, when you make reading your Bible something that's tasty, when you make praying and, and doing the things of God something tasty, then your children are going to want to enjoy it for the rest of their life. Are you passing down a taste of spiritual things to your children? Or is it like, well, we got to go to church today, so get ready and go. Hey, get in there and read your Bible. Something you have to do every day. You see, we don't make the things of God to be tasty and enjoyable to our children. And we need to make it tasty. And the best way to learn Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. You see, folks, your children are going to enjoy doing what you enjoy doing. If you have a favorite cookie, I can almost guarantee it's something you grew up with. And maybe it's not somebody else's favorite cookie because they didn't grow up with it. But when we grow up with something that's tasty, when we as parents demonstrate by what we do to our children that this is good, then our children decide it's good too. So we need to start with the recipe, but you've got to use the right ingredients. Go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, and look at verses 5 through 8. 2 Peter chapter 1, and beginning with verse number 5, it says, And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and the virtue, knowledge, and the knowledge, temperance, and the temperance, patience, the patience, godliness, and the godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You've you got to have the right ingredients. You see, I, I, um, I made these cookies last night. I made the cookie dough and everything last night. Well, actually, I, I started making the cookie dough, and I would go back to the bedroom and say, honey, where's this? And then go back and find that. And then I come back to the bedroom and say, "Well, honey, where's that?" And then I come back and find that. So finally, my honey came out, and, I, and uh, <laughs> she started taking over and making the cookie dough. 
Uh, and especially because you remember the last time I did this, I left out a couple of ingredients. And so uh, you've got to have the right ingredients. If you want it to taste right in the end, you've got to have the right ingredients. And that means using the best ingredients. It says, add to your faith virtue. The word virtue is the idea of something that's the best. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, whether therefore you eat or drink or what you do, do all to the glory of God. I remember my wife makes these cookies all the time. And I remember one time she made the cookies and I went in there, grabbed one off the little the rack where they cool off, you know, and I, I grabbed one before she could smack my hand. And, and I, I started eating the cookie and I said, ooh, what's wrong with this cookie? And she said, nothing's wrong with it. Make it just like I always do. And I said, there's something wrong with these cookies. And she took one, took a taste of it and said, yeah, there is. And she figured out she'd gotten some off-brand shortening. Instead of using the good stuff, she got the off-brand cheap stuff. And boy, you could taste it. You could tell the difference because the ingredients. And listen, folks, the ingredients in life will determine the ultimate quality of your life. You've got to make sure you're using the right ingredients. Add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, and knowledge, patience. These are the ingredients that build a quality life. Sometimes, like my last batch, something's missing. We've left out something special. In 1 Corinthians 13, it, it says you can have all these other things, but if you leave out the love, you're nothing. And sometimes what we leave out is we leave out the love. I'll tell you what, I, I like some certain store cookies, store-bought cookies, but there's nothing that beats my wife's cookies because they're made with love. And we need to realize that everything we do in life needs to have that final ingredient of love. The love for God, the love for others, the love for our family, the love for our friends. In Proverbs 25, 16, it says, Hast thou found honey? Eat so much is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled thereof and vomit it. When my mom was making cookies one time, I asked her, well, what makes cookies taste so good? And she, was, she had in her hand this bottle of vanilla. And she said, well, this is what makes them taste good. And so later on, when she was out of the kitchen, I thought, if vanilla makes cookies taste good, then vanilla must taste good. Have you ever had vanilla straight from the bottle? You, you ever had that? Zeke, come up here. This is what makes cookies taste good, Zig. All right, here you go. Ready? How is that? <laughs> it's a little bit hard, isn't it? So sometimes something that's good is not so good by itself. And that's something we need to remember as well, is we need to remember that all of this comes together in order to create what God wants to create in our lives. In Job chapter 6 and verse number 6 says, Can that which is unsavory be without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? You know, there's salt in these cookies. And I thought, salt? What? But salt's not sweet. But salt enhances the taste. It, it causes your taste buds to be more receptive. In Matthew 5.13 it says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if salt hath lost its savor, wherewith shall be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. And sometimes we need that, that, those things in life that are, that are not sweet, but they bring out the flavor and the goodness of God in our lives. But we take all these ingredients and we got to stir them up. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds in ways, by ways of remembrance. You see, who would like to have a cookie? Let me just get this illustration. All right, Ricky, come on up here. I'm going to give you a cookie. No, the other Ricky. I'm going to do it the other Ricky. You get to eat the cookie one ingredient at a time. So, come here. No, 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 no. no. This is brown sugar, so that's, that's a good thing. So go ahead. Go ahead. And then there's uh, white sugar. Here's a white sugar. There you go. And then there's um, baking soda. And, uh, oh, there's Crisco uh, here. Uh, how's that? Yeah. And flour. Here's some flour. Is the cookie good? <laughs> and I'll, 
I'll end with I'll end with some chocolate chips. There you go. All right. And I didn't even give him the egg. Doesn't quite taste right, does it? Uh, while I'm talking to you, I'm going to put these in the oven here, if you don't mind. So we'll stick those right in there. Here's the thing, folks. You wouldn't enjoy a cookie that way. Oh, I, I enjoy the chocolate chips, maybe a little bit of sugar, and, and all, but not the Crisco and not the ba- baking powder and the flour by itself. But that's why a lot of you don't enjoy the Christian life. Because you're kind of taking the Christian life a little piece here and a little piece there. Instead of what God says, the Christian life is what you bring together. You bring all these ingredients together, going to church, reading your Bible, praying. All of these things have to come together, and you stir them up, and you create something wonderful. So if you're the person saying, I really don't enjoy the Christian life, maybe you're, eating the, you're taking the Christian life like I just fed Ricky that cookie. And what you need to do is you need to put it all together and bring those ingredients together in your life to create what God wants to create, to stir up these things. You see, when you make the cookies, you've got to have the right measure. In Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about having the correct measure of things. So you've got to be careful. I, I'm the kind of cook that kind of just says a cup, oh, that looks about right. A pinch of salt, uh, this is close enough. You know, uh, that, that works sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. And, and God wants us to measure out the things in our lives, to take time to think through and how we're going to do these things, and then to blend them together. Go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, and look at verses 19 through 20. Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 19. But other apostles say, saw, uh, I say, uh, none save James the Lord. Uh, now things which are, let's see if I get the right passage here. Galatians 2, 19 through 20. I wrote down the wrong reference here. Let me look at chapter 3 here by chance. All right, I, I wrote down the wrong reference. I'll get that for you later. But the point is this, is that the things that God brings in our lives got to be blended together to where you can't tell one flavor ends and the other begins. Have you ever bitten at something and you get all the salt in one bite? or all the baking soda in one bite. Just because somebody didn't stir it up the way they should. They didn't blend it together the way they should. In Acts chapter 5, it, it talked about the apostles, and, and to him they agreed, and when they called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that the apostles, that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing they accounted worthy to suffer shame for his name. You see, sometimes God brings things in our lives that are going to stir everything up and brings things in our lives that are even going to beat us up a little bit. But that God's using those things to get everything blended together, to work in our lives, to bring it to one. God wants us to be cookie-cutter Christians. In Romans 8.29, it says, Conform to the image of His Son. We're to be like Christ, but uniquely different. Sometimes I'll go buy store-bought cookies, and all of them are exactly alike. I like our cookies because each one's a little bit different, but they're all the same. And God says, you and I, we're to be like Christ. Each of us is unique in our creation by God, and each of us is unique in, in what God is doing in our lives, but ultimately we're to be conformed to His image. The thing that makes cookies really special is when you bake them. In Luke chapter 24, verse number 32, it says, And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked talk with us by the way and while he opened his scriptures? It's when the word of God burns in your heart and life. That's when it really brings out the flavor. It brings out the goodness of the Christian life. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove was a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, it's it's the oven that transforms those cookies from cookie dough to something special. And God wants to transform your life into something special. And sometimes to do that, he puts you into the heat of the oven. You know, one of the things you've got to do is you've got to preheat the oven. Get it ready before you put it in there. 
In Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, it says, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it. See, Ezra preheated his oven, his heart. He said, before I even go to church, before I even go to my knees in prayer, before I even look to the Lord, the thing I'm going to do is say, Lord, I want to preheat my heart. I want to be ready to do what you want me to do. And we've got to realize that the hot times of life are what gives us our sweetest savor. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. Some of you may be going through some very hot times in your life, but maybe God's using that oven to bring out the special savor of Christ in you, the sweetness of God. Now, when you put it in the oven, one of the things you got to do is you got to set the timer. I just put those cookies in the oven, and I forgot to set the timer. So i got to check them here real quick, all right, to make sure they don't get burnt. Okay, we're still good. But you got to set the timer. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 27, verses 13 and 14, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Sometimes God's timer takes forever. We were making the cookies last night, and you got to remember, my wife and I have been very, we're very busy all week getting ready for the ladies' conference. We were busy all day Friday, all day Saturday. We were worn out. And I got home and I thought, uh oh, I have to get an illustration ready. And so we're in there making those cookies, and I turned that timer on, and I set it for, I think, 12 minutes. And when I looked at it again, it was at 11. And when I looked at it again, it was still at 11. The next time I looked at it was at 9. But it was at 9 for about two hours. It just seemed to take forever. Doesn't it like that? And sometimes when God's working our life, it seems like, Lord, what's going on? And it's tough to wait. But God's got a plan and God's got a purpose. And he wants you to stay there because my wife said, I I started to go take the cookies out of the oven before they were ready. My wife said, no you got to wait. Otherwise, they won't be cooked. They won't be baked right. And we've got to learn to wait on the Lord. One of the things about cookies is good is sharing them. I had made some earlier today because I wanted the auditorium to smell like cookies. And so when the worship team came in, I, I gave them all cookies. Now, I've still got a few up here in this pan. So anybody else want a cookie? I've got a few over here. Ricky, I'm going to be nice to you. And give it to you, first of all, since you had to eat the cookie the other way. So you get the first one. There you go. All right. Somebody else want a cookie here? Uh, Anybody else there? All right. There you are. And anybody else? I'll go down here a little bit. You want a cookie? All right. Here you are. All right. Somebody else want to? I'll give you guys, since we had to bail out of that dinner with you. So there you go. Oops. I'm sorry. Here, let me give you. All right. Oh, the pregnant lady needs a cookie. So there we are. All right, I got a few for the backslide group over here. Anybody over here want a cookie? We got a whole group over here that wants one. So, all right, I'm going to give you a couple to share here. Just one. And then here's another one. You can share with your family, all right? All right. All right, I'll come over here and give you guys a cookie. All right, Brother Hutchinson, there's yours. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry, guys. These girls are prettier than you. Whoops. Ah, uh, Zeke. There you go, Zeke. All right. Now here's the problem, folks. I'm out of cookies, but God's never out of His love. It never runs out, and we need to remember that the love of God is endless. Now, God wants us to be people that share with others. And this is one of the reasons we're asking you this week to take a plate of cookies to a neighbor, a coworker, a friend, a family member, along with an invitation to church, just to show that you care. You see, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And it's just a way of showing that. There's a story in Acts chapter 9 about a young lady named uh, Tabitha, how that 
She died, and when she died, everybody was coming and showed, this is what she did for me. This is what she did for me. And the people around you are waiting for somebody that cares about them. And even as simple as a plate of cookies or a cake or a pie or whatever else it might be is a way of caring for the people around you. It's not the only way, but it's one way we can give and show the world the love of God. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 41, it says, For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. If God is going to reward them for giving somebody a cup of water, then how much greater reward will it be for a plate of cookies? So can I challenge you? This week, make some cookies. Now, if you're a lousy cook, then go out and buy them. That's okay. (laughs) Or find somebody else that makes cookies and say, can you help me here? But make some cookies and take them to somebody and just say, these are for you. Because I care. And by the way, we'd love to have you come to church. It's just a way to reach out. But as you're making those cookies, and I think these are probably done. He agrees with me. All right. As you're making those cookies, remember, as you, the same way you're doing with those cookies, God is doing in your life. And it starts with the recipe. So I hope next time you take your Bible down off the shelf, I hope you open it up and just read it and enjoy it, because it's a book that can be enjoyed. But remember, you need to also take what you read and put the recipe to work in your life. Use the right ingredients. Blend them all together, and sometimes that takes a little bit of beating. And then put it in the oven and let God do what he's going to do in your life to make it special.